Hello everyone, welcome back to the RationalInvestor.com's weekend offering. This is our, uh, give it a funny name, the Broiler Chicken Show. Just because uh, I used to be an old futures trader and futures broker and it was always uh, funny uh, when they kept trying to list uh, broiler chicken futures and they just wouldn't take. They tried like three or four times. <laughs> So, uh, broiler chickens have a near and dear place in my heart. Uh, of course, everybody knows about uh, pork bellies and live hogs and feeder cattle. But, no, I'm just not interested in trading broiler chickens. Anyway. Um, so, uh, kind of a quiet weekend. Uh, we've got, of course, uh, big fundamental events coming up here uh, in the not-too-distant future for crypto. And, uh, you know, actually Kevin showed me this uh, site uh, recently, a really good sort of um, news aggregator for uh, crypto, CryptoPanic.com. So I like to load this up in the morning to see what the heck's going on. Uh, lots of talk about like false breakouts and, oh, I, you know, I don't know whether uh, it's a dump or whether it's a fake out or all that, but... Um, I did some, see some interesting uh, sort of notes that caught my attention here. Um, you know, uh, I think it's important for us to uh, keep in mind that uh, Ethereum has uh, their developer conference coming up here soon. So that, in a way, might explain a little bit of why we're seeing a little bit of a uh, pump in Ethereum and Ethereum names. Of course, uh, they did the big... Um, switch if I'm not mistaken on the tethers from uh, from uh, the Omni chain over to um, to Ethereum so that probably explains a bit of what's going on there as well um, and you see you know what actually one thing that kind of noticed me today um, is uh, a lot more talk about sort of like the junior names uh, altcoins if you will Feeling a little bit more uh, bottomy. Uh, maybe we've sort of hit the uh, the catalyst for them to uh, finally start bottoming out. We're we're seeing the smatterings of that in the data. <laughs> um, if we go look at things like uh, the Bitcoin internals, um, you know, we have had uh, we follow three different uh, altcoin indexes on the site, and you can see they're all. You know, if anything, what I would consider this is what they call sort of dead cat bounce. Uh, now we're finding out whether, um, you know, at the very least, uh, we needed to relieve some oversold conditions um, in the altcoin market. I think that's going on to a certain degree. You can see how previous dead cat bounces off of new lows uh, ultimately petered out and we had to head back down to new lows. So uh, it's still a little bit early for us to call like any kind of sort of, you know, altcoin renaissance or anything like that. Uh, as well, too, uh, you know, a lot of our conversation of late has been dominated by the dominator. Uh, and Bitcoin dominance did uh, top out there as sort of, you know, Ethereum and those kind of names had a nice little, uh, you know, like I said, dead cap bounce rally. Um, notice cute little W's uh, coming in. Uh, people in the TRI lounge were posting that this morning. So uh, we might be seeing a bit of a check of this. And I think I mentioned this on the sort of free video on Friday that uh, could we do a little bit of uh, pullback against this? Sure. Uh, and then flip side, the uh, total two. Uh, it bottomed. Uh, could we see a bit of a pullback against that bottom just to test the breakout level? Sure, absolutely natural. Um, this total uh, down here, I don't know whether I would actually call that an official breakout. It's almost like the market sort of like uh, head faked its way up and then said, Meh, I'm not quite ready just yet. So uh, at best, what I'm sort of considering this, uh, this market right now is, um, you know, Bitcoin still very much just going sideways. Um, and uh, a lot of the altcoins, we had a little bit of sort of window of uh, opportunity here where 
we had this uh, backed event coming up which sort of froze out market participants uh, you probably heard me squawk about how my old prop firm guys would just be adamant about how you cannot um, um, have positions on heading into big uh, fundamental events and I get the funny feeling to a certain degree that's uh, sort of the situation here so uh, you know all in all uh, dead cat bouncy kind of market for the altcoins Bitcoin going sideways into a big fundamental event end result is uh, you know based on our algos just a big hurry up and almost do nothing market we had uh, algo breakdown fails uh, geez about a week or two ago and interestingly enough those algo signals never did get stopped out and then new ims come in and we had bearish bots that had uh, moose stop to trailing levels on these kind of uh, dumps uh, they were politely told to exit so just a big hurry up and almost just do nothing here um and uh if we look at it from uh this chart uh perspective you know mr gan oh geez mr gan's just uh, owning this market right now a very typical sort of range market kind of state um a b equals c d's like we said move stop to uh trailing on bod levels uh they were told to exit off of lower time frames and then uh, we had, you know, this was uh, Thursday's event, that uh, sort of reversal day, head fake. I saw guys like Bollinger and stuff um, touting out that, uh, tweeting out that he figured this was a classic head fake. But at the same time, too, uh, one bar itself doesn't make a reversal. Um, and we were, if this was indeed going to be a bullish reversal, we wanted to see a trade back up through that high. And you notice the next day we politely put in an inside bar and we failed yesterday. Um, and I often see this in the market, you know, take note of this. This is, uh, I've seen this uh, time and time again. And this is sort of the main reason why we want to make sure that uh, we wait for a W on the other side of trend lines because we could very easily actually just work our way actually down along this trend line until we start getting back into support against this trend line here. Um, and we just don't have any bullish reversals here. One thing I will say though that uh, I am uh, kind of pleased at is um, you know, we got this backed event, uh, supposedly, I guess. It's going to happen uh, tomorrow morning. That one is uh, something like that. Um, we never really did get the buy the rumor scenario here on this backed event. So, interestingly enough, this might actually be sort of a sell the rumor and then buy the news um, following this. So well, we'll see what happens. Uh, only time will to hell. Uh, but clearly, it, in my eyes, uh, you know, the whole market's getting ready for this uh, big old backed event. Um, I'm also hearing too a lot of chatter, and I, you know, I guess it kind of makes sense to me because um, I've been uh, squawking. Uh, where the heck is it? It's around here somewhere. Yeah, I've been squawking about you know, 50% of this range needing to be traded to that 8,500. Maybe if we're really lucky, we get some sort of, you know, the backed event happens, we get a nice big FU move down into those 50% levels, and then it just jackknifes back up. Um, and um, I did see, I think it was Colleen. I think Colleen, you're in the call here today. Um, but I think I did see her uh, post a chart that was very similar. I think you saw it in like 2017. Uh, da, 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 da. Here it is. Uh, how am I going to do this? Um, I'll copy that. Let's see what happens when I do this. Survey says, boom. Nope, that's not what I wanted. Uh... How do I get that over there? Oh, well, I'll just show the screen. <laughs> uh, so, Colleen uh, posted this. Um, and um, in a weird sort of way, that triangle, I, I kind of, I would like to see that. That would actually, in my eyes, would be uh, desirable. So 
sort of the final dump. Everybody hates Bitcoin. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, it rallies right back up and recaptures that level. That would be uh, that would be a really cool scenario to sort of mark the bottom, you know. But uh, for now, um, I mean, I don't know whether I subscribe to this newsletter or not. It is an interesting thesis. Uh, it would sort of validate Mr. Gann's thinking. Um, and I see some like sort of old school technical analyst, uh, that Peter Brandt guy. Um, he seems to be uh, squawking a bit about looking for um, uh, looking for some sort of dump out of this triangle before all is said and done. Where the heck did I put it? Uh, there it is there. So, uh, you know, he's uh, tw tweeting out these kind of things. I don't know whether we need to dip all the way back down to 57.50 or not. I mean, certainly it's a mugs game. Uh, calling levels here. Uh, interestingly enough, I actually think that uh, if his head and shoulders thesis is correct, we should take the high um, of uh, the, the head projected off of uh, the neckline. And you can see that's about like 1500 bucks or so. Yeah, let's call it 2000. We'll be generous. Um, and that would actually project a target down in sort of that 700 area, maybe against all these uh, previous kilos. So uh, that's what I would be thinking if we did actually get a dump event here. At the same time, too, though, everybody should be cognizant that, uh, you know, and, and if anything, I think this is a really good analogy of sort of that that uh, potential uh, bullish setup that we had through FOMC and then it eventually melted down and disappeared. Uh, I don't know whether I still have that chart on here or not. Um, uh, do, 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 do. Might have been this one. Yeah, that was all through here, right? Big consolidation, but you got to wait for it. Uh, you have to see the actual breakout first and ideally you'd like to look down your indicators and see confirmation um, and while all this bearish market structure was just working away it was still sort of validating for the uh, for the bears so uh, just sort of uh, dovetail to this <clears throat> if uh, if the bullish scenario is actually indeed correct here we really need to see closes above uh, these highs up in here. That's sort of that 10,800 area on Mr. Uh, Bryant's chart. So I, you know, on balance, I think the bear is still sort of driving the bus. Um, in the short term, you know, on the weekly charts, you can see the inside bar failure here. Um, and on the daily charts, uh, I think I showed you, uh, we had a daily inside bar fail. So if this really is a bull, we got to see the bull step up here. And I think it's really dangerous assuming anything right now. Um, and on this, this little setup that, that basically was told to walk away at, uh, you know, trailing level small profits. For me right now, I'm just sort of stuck in no man's land. And really, I don't think that this thing resolves itself until uh, this wick up top here is resolved. Uh, and uh, this tail down here is resolved. And like I said, then, you know, like M's, the natural course for this thing, I think, is actually just to continue following along the trend line here. So just be cognizant of that. Be wary of that. You know, if you are a bull, we got to see some W's come in here before we can get really too bullish. It's just as simple as that. Um... So, uh, everybody, uh, keep your eyes peeled. We'll see how this backed event goes. Um, but on balance, uh, I think the bear's got the ball right now. And it's incumbent on the bull to wake up and, uh, and take over. Uh, and it hasn't happened yet. Um, I, you know, normally uh, these Sunday calls, um, we like to uh, dovetail them. 
with our level one program um, that's uh, you know working away right now but unfortunately our level one instructor uh, came down ill uh, so my apologies uh, for the uh, level oneers. Uh, ironically enough, you're working through one of the, probably the thickest module <laughs> in the level one program right now. So if anything, it's probably good that you uh, have an extra week uh, to uh, study up um, and try and wrap your head around all the different concepts that we throw at you this uh, week one of the program. Um, but if there is any level oneers that happen to be in the call um, or over on YouTube and are watching uh, and you have like a pressing question, you know, these broiler chicken shows are really supposed to be a dovetail for you guys to uh, make sure you help, uh, you know, answer any questions that you have. Um smash up the like button squeeze the subscribe button blow up the notification button <laughs> thank you andreas so we better uh we'll show that one <laughs> thank you i appreciate that um so um uh, as i said just a moment ago if there are any level oneers current level oneers that are on the call and we're like oh man i can't believe there's no class i totally wanted to ask this question you know feel free to ask now uh, i'll be more than happy to try to answer uh you know considering how quiet the uh, broader market is in crypto here and uh you know the message really hasn't changed at all uh and you know like trade setup wise i'm just sitting on the sidelines right now waiting for this uh, fundamental event to happen um yeah, the call might be relatively short here today in fact uh on the tri lounge uh the, this was supposed to be colleen's private tutorial here today right <laughs> uh peter arnold asks one question oh now where the hell did that go uh one question which came up a lot in the q a sheet is where we are in the current fear greed cycle oh boy Well, um, ma'am, okay, so that's, I mean, it's a perfectly valid question, it makes sense. Um, if we, um, what's the best way to show this to you? Problem is, you know, like, uh, they always say history rhymes, but it never, it very rarely, I mean, like, history likes to repeat itself, but very rarely does it ever repeat itself exactly. A lot of the times it just sort of rhymes. Um, you know, generationally speaking, uh, no doubt about it, uh, the baby boomers um, have left the economy. Uh, the past 15, 20 years was basically the process of them leaving the economy. Um, in a weird sort of way, um, I get the impression that uh, something like gold what was the baby boomers sort of um, <clears throat> um, asset of choice, if you will, uh, through uh, their respective uh, fear cycle. Uh, and this would be sort of the uh, greatest generation uh, leaving the workforce um, and the baby boomers coming online. Keep in mind that, you know, very similar to sort of crypto in 2015, 2016, 2017 kind of idea. Uh, futures trading and uh, commodities trading was a brand new concept. Uh, very similar to the way crypto was a brand new concept um, through this uh, millennials uh, generations coming online. Uh, and I, you know, if we go uh, commodity by commodity by commodity, uh, you, you see this repeated pattern, whether it be soybeans, whether it be coffee, whether it be gold, whether it be silver, whether it be oil. Um, so to a certain degree, I believe that this was uh, the, the baby boomers uh, fear cycle and, and the greatest generation leaving the economy. Um, and sort of the the advent of sort of the pivot here, and again, it's very similar to the conversations that we're having today, is our democratically elected governments 
understanding that there are obligations for the greatest generation's pensions and stuff like that. Um, and, you know, democratically elected governments over promising social services, all that kind of stuff. Um, their solution, of course, was uh, Ronald Reagan coming in and saying, yeah, we uh, governments can run deficits. Why not? And um, and us just like, you know, diluting the purchasing power of the currency uh, uh, to basically uh, save the economy. Um, I believe that it's sort of like um, into that event. Uh, this is where all the technical damage is being done to the market. And then once the actual event happens, then we go through, okay, well, now this is our new world that we live in. Um, and, you know, I might argue that through this particular fear greed cycle, you can see the other side of it. Anybody that got really too excited about uh, buying gold on here, well, they had to sit for a very, very long time um, just doing nothing and sitting on losing investments as we went through uh, the baby boomers taking over the economy. And this is sort of their new world. This is the baby boomers world. Then unfortunately, these charts just don't go back far enough, right? Ironically enough, this gold chart actually started its run at like 30 bucks. Uh, and we never went back down to those levels. So, you know, I would make the argument this was a long term, you know, through here uh, fear of how are we going to deal with governments over promising and under delivering and is the system going to blow up? And then, uh, you know, things like war on inflation and, you know, Mr. Reagan, yeah, we can spend money we don't have. Why not? Uh, that sort of set the stage for the next greed cycle. And I never know if you spell greed, two E's or E-A. <laughs> anyway, terrible spelling, I know. Um, and actually, one really cool way to see this is if you go... Um, Maybe what we'll do is we'll go uh, DJI divided by GC one exclamation mark. I don't know whether that's going to work or not. Um, well, let's see what happens. Boom. Um, so if we value our hard assets versus soft assets, uh, i.e. gold is a... Um, is a hard asset and something like the Dow Jones Industrial Average is a, a paper asset. You can see that the preference towards uh, hard assets uh, right through that cycle peak hit its sort of peak. Uh, and then on the other side of that, um, soft assets versus hard assets, you can see that cycle hit a peak back in 99. Um, and what was really weird, like through this period, is uh, there there were like uh, economists, university professors that were actually coming on saying there will never be another recession and all that kind of crazy talk, just absolute insanity. And um, you know, in the education program for the level oneers, uh, we'll tell you the story of Nortel Networks and how um, all of the sort of university professors and stuff were laughing at the Nortel Network CEO when he sold all his stock up at the top of the market. <laughs> Who's laughing now? So, um, you know, that these gold Dow ratios are really good, simple way to sort of see this. The problem in our society today now is, um, has gold been usurped by this uh, crazy thing called uh, Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies? And you hear a lot of people in the uh, in the media and stuff talking about, um, you know, crypto is today's digital gold. Uh, could you make the argument that this particular cycle's uh, pivot actually for gold came in uh, 2012? Sure. I mean, these, these things are not written in stone. This is sort of like seeing the forest through the trees. Um, 
and don't try and like time your purchases uh, of these assets on this. Like this is just sort of bigger picture generational kind of conversation. I'd be really curious and I think, um, I don't know whether I have it here or not, but I should. Uh, I'd be really curious to see um, the effects of, um, of Bitcoin on that gold relationship. Um, I don't know whether I have it on here or not. Hmm. I used to watch this chart fairly regularly, but I haven't looked at it in a bit. Uh, might be this one. Let's see what we got here. Nope, that's not it. What did I do with that chart? Uh, no, 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 no. Uh, no, no, no. Hmm. What did I do with it? Anyway, I used to uh, follow a. Um, uh, might be over here. Uh, give me a second here. So I have on here um, uh, Bitcoin, uh, the U.S. dollar index, and gold. Um, and hopefully you can see like the normal historical sort of correlations. Um, in that usually uh, if we have sort of a bottoming U.S. dollar, which is green, you have a, a heavy uh, gold market. And then conversely, if you have a heavy... Um, well, you know, bottom in U.S. dollar, uh, top in gold. And then conversely, usually when you have a top in the U.S. dollar index, you get a bottom in gold. And um, my sort of 17 and a half year generational thesis uh, basically called for sort of a peak of this gold Dow ratio around 2017. Uh, and I find it fascinating how Bitcoin basically just went absolutely bananas uh, right into that event. And if we go back to that gold chart um, from here, right, um, this bottom um, in the, uh, and maybe we should put it the other way around just so you can see a little better. Um, right, so... Uh, Oops. Uh, this uh, top basically came in, right? You can see like January, February, 1980. Um, and then conversely, this top here came in basically, you know, 1999. So that's like, all, that's about what, um, 17, 18 years. So um, my thesis was that this, if everything was normal, <laughs> this gold market should have topped out right around this 7, 2017, 2018. But something came along in 2011, 2012, 2013 and ate gold's lunch. And literally anybody who was going to buy gold as sort of a fear proxy and keep your money safe. And remember, the gold market was a commodities product and in like 1980 this was all the rage all the commodities well this cycle was the commodities market all the rage um in the market no there was something else that was all the rage do any of you guys know what it was that was all the rage <laughs> Right, and then we'll just go back to this chart, and you can clearly see 
here comes, you know, this is literally this the, the start of Bitcoin, 2011, uh, 2014, 15, and then into that cycle peak. Holy for holies. So it would be really interesting to do a study of, um, and I'm not even quite sure how to do this, but, you know, all you um, smart sort of computer people, you should be able to figure out how to do this. How could we create an index of gold and Bitcoin and then measure it um, measure it versus the Dow? That would be a really interesting chart. Um, so, you know, and the, the sad part about it for the gold bugs is, you know, they're saying, okay, now it's our cycle. Now it's our cycle. And, you know, I, I don't necessarily subscribe to that newsletter. Uh, I do definitely like the idea that um, that we have a Jupiter-Saturn cross coming up. Um, actually, that's not what I wanted to do. Sorry. Uh, well, let's hide that. Um, but, you know, so that's injecting a lot of uncertainty and a lot of fear and sort of in the marketplace. And it's weird how, like, we... Uh, like the actual cross and the position of Jupiter and Saturn makes it it happen right around the middle of the summer. And I noticed that end of July, beginning of August, we went through a really wonky sort of phase there. And now we're coming out the other side of it. Um, so, you know, next summer, I fully expect uh, um, there to be some absolute chaos in the market. But you can see the gold market. I mean, we're not even close to those old highs, let alone doing anything like uh, the cycles would normally uh, suggest, you know, these kind of insane oh, face rip moves. But I don't think you're going to see that on gold because... This was last cycles, like the the baby boomer cycle. This was their new product. That's why it acted this way. And gee whiz, we look at the Bitcoin chart, and it, this was basically this cycle's proxy, and it did act that way right through that fear cycle apex, exactly when it was supposed to. Uh, and like I said, if you juxtaposed like both of these, uh, the gold and Bitcoin together, my hunch is that's actually going to be sort of our cycle pivot reference going forward. And I think it's just really a question of when does um, when does sort of gold uh, Bitcoin get added to commodity indexes? And uh, going forward, you know, when we see that it's sort of a basket of commodity prices, we'll see this behavior in things like sort of like you know the anti um uh us dollar proxies um interestingly enough i might make the argument that uh the us dollar index actually did uh what i would expect it to do through that cycle uh apex um hitting a a panic low there and you notice that since that cycle apex, the U.S. dollar has done nothing but go up here. Um, and I still don't really have any signs that, that, that there's any sort of failure here on the U.S. dollar. This thing might just keep charging its way higher here. And historically, that, that would make sense. Um, but what it would suggest, to me anyway, is that the big panic in the market uh, didn't come right on the sort of um, the uh, apex event uh, on Bitcoin, but the big panic sort of developed right in through the financial asset crisis. Like I think if we look back 10, 20 years from now, everybody's going to make reference to 2008, 2009, quantitative easing, modern monetary theory, blah, 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 as sort of the big cycle pivot. Um that's sort of the way that I look at it. Um, so having said that, I, I think that we're actually on the other side of this cycle now, believe it or not. Um, you know, that fear greed cycle. But the question ultimately is, what does it look like uh, when we actually do transition into the next cycle? Um, 
And, you know, if we uh, we will go back to this chart, but now maybe we'll just look at the Dow itself. Um, ironically, um, you know, like here's the big problem for level oneers right now, I assume, is, uh, you know, back in 1980, let me go zoom this out. Back in 1980, um, it was fairly clear cut. All right, you can see uh, the last sort of generational cycle. There was the top of the market, and I don't know, maybe you can even go off of those. That was the lows somewhere down in there, right? Something like that. You know, so there was your trading range, um, and we got pretty clear cut uh, anecdotal evidence when we broke out through the top. But remember, through this cycle, um, you know, like Mr. Nixon, for example, he took the Americans off the gold standard right in here. Um, but at the very least, it was believed that if you're running a country's um, um, treasury, that you should live in a world where you balance budgets, right? And back in these days, um, governments were actually held to account. They had to balance budgets, and if they didn't balance the budget, their currency would start collapsing and you'd get like hyperinflation. Uh, and really, it makes sense. I mean, that's what should happen. Um, so in this sort of world, the value that this paper asset is being priced in is staying stable. So, you know, when we get the transition from this fear cycle greatest generation leaving the economy, baby boomers coming online into their growth cycle. It's pretty clean cut where the breakout was. Um, what I'm worried about in this particular cycle, of course, is that, wow, that chart doesn't look anything at all the same. Right? I think you can make the argument that if everything was left equal and stable, that this should have been our sort of trading range kind of idea. Um, but, you know, 2008 financial crisis through this mess right here, um, all of our 1%, uh, the banking industry saving their asses, you know, Alan Greenspan publicly coming out and saying, we own the world. We can print as much money as we want. Fuck you to everybody. There's not a damn thing you can do about it. And that is what this world is, where are the actual stock assets themselves uh, more valuable? Have their earnings appreciably grown? Or is it really a function that this thing over here that this asset's being priced in is is being artificially manipulated and really in reality it is that's quantitative easing mon mo modern monetary theory which is in my opinion is a lot of horseshit um, and you know this is the classic emperor's new clothes um, as long as there is no realistic alternative think alan greenspan motherfucker just sitting there just totally arrogant we can do whatever we want we're the bankers we own the world fuck you to your standard of living we don't give a shit you know we're going to make sure that our six-figure incomes are uh, nice and um you know secured and the technocracy just keeps going on well, i don't care i mean it frankly speaking i think it's actually incredibly arrogant and it's incredibly insulting the way that the americans have basically uh flaunted their winning of the Cold War and and force the world to live in this world. It's it's very irresponsible, but it is what it is. So my apologies. Yeah, I went off on a bit of a rant there. Um, what worries me about this kind of scenario is that usually you know, and basically through this period here, um, very early '80s, we had to actually go through a recession. And the Fed actually cranked interest rates up very aggressively, war on inflation and all that, which set the base for the next growth cycle. 
And I don't think we've had that recession yet, and that's what worries me. And so, Peter, this is this is where it gets really kind of complicated. Is that before we actually can, in my opinion, we can transition into that next. Uh, Peter, are you still here? You asked this question, right? Yeah. Um, before we can actually transition into this next growth cycle, I think we really have to have the recession. And we have to sort of hit the reset button with equity valuations. We have to get some fear into the economy. Uh, and people, you know, really worried. Uh, worried about their jobs, worried about whether they're going to be able to keep their homes, all that kind of stuff. That's unfortunately what has to happen to mark bottoms. And frankly speaking, all of you crypto enthusiasts, you've just gone through that. So uh, you know what ugly markets look like. We haven't had that crypto washout um, in the stock market yet. It, it just hasn't happened yet. Uh, and frankly speaking, I think it's a little overdue. Um, so I don't think that we can officially transition into that next growth cycle until we have that recession first. And so that's sort of what we're waiting for is when does that recession hit? you know get some serious pain into the market get some serious capitulation uh and then we can set the base for the next growth cycle and then also too remember jupiter saturn cross is next summer and i got a funny feeling the market's uh is going to use that as a pivot and if you don't believe me gee whiz uh, do this you know it's a fun exercise jupiter saturn cross right in 2000 then you uh, take your calendar back and you go 1980, Jupiter, Saturn, Cross, right through here. And then you take your calendar back and gee whiz, Jupiter, Saturn, Cross uh, came in right here. Um, then you take your calendar back, and this is a really interesting one. Um, right, uh, Jupiter and Saturn, Cross, right in here. So, uh, you know, this was basically in the midst of World War II. This was, uh, you know, Kennedy in the days of Camelot and Cuban Missile Crisis. This was, uh, you know, uh, uh, the Iranian hostages um, and uh, Jimmy Carter, sort of a lame duck president, top of the, you know, uh, USSR. Uh, this, of course, was the dot-com boom peak. Um, you know, greed cycle peak. So my hunch is <laughs> Jupiter, Saturn, Cross, it's coming up, folks. So get ready. I don't know who knows what the hell it's going to look like. But there is a, you know, there's a couple little tells. And anybody who's watching on uh, YouTube, I thought it was really interesting. And I almost got sucked into it, too. Uh, but uh, through the latter part of the summer there, um, all the long dated yields started really collapsing. And it looked like yield curves were starting to invert, but as you can clearly see here, based on uh, Mr. Murphy's uh, yield curve uh, tool on his site, stockcharts.com, which I personally really like, um, you notice, you know, here is the dot uh, com boom, and you notice this inversion warning, and you see what happened after that. Boom, recession. Here is uh, Junior Bush, uh, U.S. housing market um, uh, bubble, uh, inverted warning, and recession. Boom. Um, so if you we fast forward to today, and I'll just sort of fast forward this through time as we go here, you notice that we're just not getting that inverted uh, warning yet. So I don't think we're there yet. Right, I still think that this thing has to print inverted um, before we can actually start expecting uh, that correction. And then typically what do corrections look like? You can see, you know, S&P's here, we're sitting at about 1,500, and we bought them down here at about 7,800, or basically a 50% correction. Again, S&P's up in the 1500s, and in this case, we went down into like the, the low 700s, oh, 700 and change. Um, and again, I'm sort of a 50% correction. So, you know, what does this recession have to look like? My, uh, my hunch is, and keep in mind, we're not here yet. 
but my hunch is, uh, when we look at this, probably an easy gauge for you to say, all right, the reset button has been hit, is uh, we just simply ask, what is 50% of this absolutely insane number? You know, 20, uh, how high did we get here? We got up to uh, 27, 20, eh, 27,000, we'll call it. So half of uh, 27,000 sounds like uh, 13,500, right? Which would put us somewhere right around there. Uh, and what a coincidence, notice that really all that's gonna do, that 50% retracement, all it's gonna do is just bring us back down into the original breakout levels uh, from junior bush days, right? And all of these key lows, right? You can see probably, um, these key lows against this key high here is probably sort of like your area of significant support right in that area there. So um, with some sort of like absolute panic dump back into like here. And it would actually be interesting to pull up a, you know, like look at this on the daily chart and see if there are any juicy price gaps all sitting in that area. And also, too, uh, I don't think we have volume on this. Oh, well, maybe we do. No. It'd be interesting to see what the profile looks like. What do you think, Colleen? You think the, the odds are the pock is probably sitting right down here? I bet it is. So, you know, the, the issue here is... Um, uh, are we late in the economic cycle? Absolutely, right? Here's the last recession. We're now uh, a solid 10 years into this cycle. So we're overdue, there's no doubt about it. <laughs> um, yield curve threatening to invert, but it hasn't yet. Jupiter Saturn cross coming up next uh, summer. Um, and, you know, I would caution that, you know, like if we look at these long term Dow gold cycles, you notice that um, I don't know whether it was this one in particular, but really the, um, you know, if we look at, uh, let's take from, say, the 29 peak here. If we go out uh, 17 and a half years. This is weekly, so there's 52 weeks um, um, in uh, one year. So 520 would be 10 years. So 17, who's got a calculator handy on them? How many weeks is it? I think it's like 180 weeks or something like that. Uh, where's my calculator? New home building is going like crazy. All right. All right. So uh, we said 17.5 times 52. 910. Well, that was close. Um, so 910 puts us right about there, somewhere in that area. And you can sort of see that that was the eventual end of that sort of fear cycle, and then we based and took off. I wonder, you know, part of me does wonder whether uh, whether um, we might be in this same sort of environment here. I don't know, that's, it's tough to say, but that's, you know, that's a very typical sort of fear cycle, sideways. Um, if we look at this cycle, right, 910 bars. Uh, and actually, why don't we do greed, right? We'll do fear, then we'll do greed. So this greed cycle, um, everything being sort of equal, something like that. This greed cycle, um, it actually topped like right there. But you notice that uh, the market actually went a bit beyond that. Now, you know, this is sort of like forest through the trees kind of conversation. And uh, I know a lot of people are kind of like, you know, I want to know the exact, the exact, give me the exact, right? 
Um, I'm I, I'm not gonna do that because, frankly speaking, that's a mugs game as far as I'm concerned. But you know, there is 17 and a half years, um, and uh, this is the fear cycle. So you can see from start to finish, ironically enough, we ended almost exactly the same point. Do you see that? Pretty important, I think. So then we go to the next uh, greed cycle. And uh, it looks something like that. And these numbers start to get just staggeringly big. Eh? Something like that. Pretty close. There, something like that. Um, and we'll change this to blue, teal. So that's what that looks like. So you go fear, greed, fear, greed. All right. I'll put that like that. There we go. Looks nice and pretty. Um, so uh, that suggested that the top of the greed cycle was sort of somewhere right around here. So let's see how close that was. Come on, you. <sighs> Oops, where'd it go? <laughs> they're always down, they're down. No, it's not there. What did I do with it? Oh, I guess that's here. Okay, so this was this greed cycle right here. Not bad, eh? It's a pretty good forecast. Right there. Um, and let's see cl how close that was to the top of the market. Wow, that was pretty darn close, eh? So that 17 and a half year cycle ended there. But you can see the market actually went a little bit beyond all the way into December 99, and then it had to correct. So, you know, the irony of it all, and you know, we can do another one for this fear cycle. These numbers are getting so small, I'm gonna expand this so we can see this. Oh, come on, you. Yeah. That would be crazy. Crazy. Look at that. I can't get a... Something like that. I'm just sort of eyeballing this here, folks. Uh, do, 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 do. Oh, something like that. Uh, okay, so uh, let's move that one over here. Of course, you won't, don't want to help. Uh, Jesus, this drives you crazy. Uh, look at that. <laughs> Sorry, everyone. You're like, uh, downvote, downvote. This guy's an idiot. What the hell am I doing here? Oh, look at that. You just don't want to fucking cooperate. Uh, uh, <laughs> I can't get it to go there, jerk. <laughs> uh, anyway, now I'm just wasting everybody's time. Uh, all right, this is the uh, ADD in Brian. <laughs> or, uh, so, uh, maybe obsessive compulsive. Anyway, something like that. All right, so um, where does that put us on our timeline? Uh, so we'll do another one. And geez, even that's an expanded one, eh? Um, all right, there we are. And I, you know, of course, to the level oneers, I have all these charts all pretty and stuff for the uh, course material. All right, so that puts our next cycle right roughly there you know and we're off by a day you know a few months here or weeks or whatever so that means that our cycle oh look at that eh so uh i don't know whether you guys can see this or not but in essence that cycle oh look at that no that's not right <laughs> okay no here it is way over here this makes sense yeah 
So our cycle is sort of completely disconnected. Uh, you know, and I mean, geez, uh, this is going back now uh, to 1929 with these fairly accurate, um, oh, why the hell is that not working? Uh, fairly accurate windows. Um, but you can see, you know, like this went on uh, a few more years, right? And then we actually went into this pattern. This one, you know, you can actually make the argument that the actual pivot came in, you know, what is that? That's uh, 82, and this was August, right? So that was uh, January, so that was like eight months later that pivot eventually came in. So I don't really like to use this as sort of like this will absolutely happen on this date. That's, that's dangerous. Uh, but Peter, what I need for you to see is, you know, uh, greed cycle growth, fear cycle contraction. Has something changed here? Yes, they've diluted the shit out of the purchasing power of the currency. But at some point here for us to actually start the next growth cycle, I need to have some sort of check. Um, now, you know, I mean, the market will do any old damn thing it wants. Notice coming, and I often see a lot of correlation to this. Notice coming out of the uh, World War II environment, right, that transition into the next greed cycle, you know, um, did we ever get that 50% retracement uh, for recession? Well, um, I don't even see that till ultimately way up here. So, you know, maybe we do one of these sort of stair step our way higher. That's definitely possible. Um, but I, I, for me to feel comfortable that we have actually transitioned into the next growth cycle, uh, I would like to see them hit the reset button on this and just sort of clean this up. So, uh, you know, those uh, 17 and a half year greed uh, fear cycles, I definitely think we've come to the end of the fear cycle. We're now into the next 17 and a half year greed cycle. And this thing, it, it's going to last a long time, right? Uh, this greed cycle goes all the way out to here. So, and this should be uh, roughly about 2032, 2033, somewhere out into there. So, get ready for some fireworks. We should see some uh, pretty wild uh, price appreciation here. Um, but just, uh, you know, old gnarly Brian technician dude, I would like to see a recession first to sort of clean up the excesses of this last cycle. I think this cycle has gone too far um, and um, and get some pain into the market. Um, we might find though that the pain in the market is experienced by the commodities uh, people. You know, keep in mind, here's a kick in the pants, right? If you are an oil baron or if you're an oil bull, ironically enough, um, you know, this is supposed to be a commodity friendly market. Um, and yet, um, did I lose all those charts? Oh, yeah. If you actually are like an oil bull, the irony of it all is that uh, the past 10 years has been crap. Um, hmm, it doesn't go that far back. Uh, I think it was this one. There we go. So, uh, I mean, we're nowhere near the heady days of Junior Bush. So, you know, this particular commodity, it actually topped back in 2000, um, you know, 2008. And we're like a little more than a third of what this price was. Um, so... You know, like if you are a hard asset investor, there's and you know you've been an oil baron or whatever. Hey, it's uh, black gold or whatever. Well, geez, I mean the market's done nothing. Um, so I guess what I'm trying to say here is all of these commodities all sort of move by their own sort of drumbeat. Uh, I will say that you know if you are a gold bull. Um, 
we're like I don't really actually see a new bull market here. What I see is just a very normal health, healthy technical correction. I can get my charts to cooperate here. Uh, right. Um, if I actually wanted to short gold, um, this is the area that I wanted to be concentrating on. So we haven't even gotten up to there yet. Uh, we still got a little further to go just to get up to the top end of the range. And uh, as I said before, you know, the uh, the clock is ticking on the commodities. Uh, you saw what happened after 1980. Um, I, I, I'm not a subscriber of the newsletter that gold's going to go absolutely crazy here. Call me crazy? I don't know. It's just me. But I don't see it. What I see is actually a trading range. Um, I think there are like individual markets that will do well. You know, like... Uh, Rare earth metals are super sexy right now. So something like a palladium. Palladium, um, you know, a classic sort of rare earth proxy. This thing's on fire right now. But it is a very specific market. And ironically enough, like I said before, I mean, why, you know, what's the big selling feature of buying gold? Um, that's sort of that safe haven. Don't have any confidence in um, in the uh, banking system. Uh, want to have an inflation proxy. Um, and there was something else that came along here. I mean, and I, you know, I love showing this chart because it just makes me laugh so hard. Because uh, you can't write better fiction than reality. But I am sure there were a lot. Actually, no, I don't want to do that. Uh, there were a lot of gold bugs that were very, very upset um, at this thing called Bitcoin that basically just came along and ate its lunch. Uh, uh, what the hell did I do here? Um, oh, come on. Jesus Christ. What the fuck? Uh, let's try this again. Yeah, I'm not doing very good with the charts today, that's for sure. Are you going to work? Yeah, you worked. So, like, I think that this was when, if, if everything was equal, this was the window when Bitcoin, or uh, when gold was going to rally. And that's basically right into our cycle thesis um, pivot. I mean, you literally can't write a script better than that. Um, and uh, frankly speaking, I think a lot of people's uh, gold lunches just got eaten because of this. So I don't know, Peter, that was about a, a half hour, 45 minute explanation <laughs> of all that. Did that help answer your question at all? Thank you. Uh, quite detailed. All right. Well, there you go. Um, and maybe uh, maybe that's all we need to talk about here today. Um, you know, as I'm sort of uh, said at the very outset of today's conversation, um, you know, I, and I've talked to, to this audience at length about this, but th there really isn't a heck of a lot of change going on here. Uh, in the Bitcoin market. Um, if anything, what I'm sort of hearing right now is um, the CME is officially launching their options um, on Bitcoin in um, Q1. And I think that'll be sort of the final death knell to sort of all this sort of 100x and, you know, we're going to get rich just by buying Bitcoin and I can absolutely guarantee you the CME boys, as soon as they get those options going, all the kind of conversation about $300,000 Bitcoin, that'll evaporate. Uh, because there'd just be too much pressure. You know, and a really good example of this is you want to, I mean, first off, we show uh, all the uh, site people the effects of the derivatives markets on uh, the market. I don't know whether I think I have it in here. Uh,
Uh, where do I have it? <gasps> oh, excuse me. Mm. Uh, somewhere in all of this, um, we, um, Maybe somebody knows the name of the site. You know that in the level one, I just showed you guys in the level one program, that uh, site that shows all the sizes of all the different markets, and then it shows the size of the derivatives market. You guys are, uh, have that handy? It's in here somewhere. I just can't remember where the hell it is. Uh, maybe it's over here. Visual Capitalist. Is that what it is? Um, oh goodness I can't remember it. Uh, but yeah but so where is it in all of this uh, I know I have it somewhere in here Anyway, it just shows the relative size of the derivatives markets and once the derivatives markets come online um, then you'll see how our markets are heavily manipulated by the derivatives. Um, but I just don't know where the hell it is in here. Uh, I wonder, I guess there's no search function in all of this. Uh, darn, 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 darn. Maybe it's over here. No, 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 Oh, I think this is it. Yeah, I think this is it. So, um, you know, here are sort of the uh, smaller uh, assets. You know, here's even the gold market, right? Um, Stock markets, uh, what's that? M1 money supply, M2 money supply. Uh, the debt markets, and then uh, there's real estate, and then we go into derivatives. Oh boy, that's pretty big. <laughs> and it keeps going, and going, and going, and going. <laughs> So the point of the matter here is hopefully you can see that once derivatives hit the markets, then um, uh, the big boys really are taking over the conversation. Uh, and actually just in Twitter, uh, I pointed out a really good example of how the derivatives markets run, um, where institutions primarily write most of the put options. You can see this is, happens to be the oil market. Uh, and you can see just staggering amounts of puts. But notice the price, right? Above $12 on this ETF, notice the open interest just completely collapses. I mean, all of these options written in here, and yet there's only like 450 written at 13 and a half, 3,000 at 13. Like, what the fuck? So uh, clearly there was a vested interest in making damn sure that this oil market did not go below $12 into expiry. Because if it does, then all of these contracts written all expire worthless. So anybody who wrote the obligation on this uh, option collects the premium. Um, and if the contract expires worthless, then that's just money in their pockets. And lo and behold, uh, keep that $12 reference in mind. We go and look at uh, what, um, I think I had oil on here somewhere, didn't I? No, oh well. Um, well, I'll just do it here. Uh, and actually, this is a fucking awesome looking stock. <laughs> I love this about our site. Um, I got so many really good stock hunters now on the site. But uh, I won't talk about that today. But uh, just to finish off that conversation about derivatives, um, gee whiz, the oil ETF finished at $12.20. 
So you can't tell me the market isn't manipulated. Um, and, you know, uh, theoretically, Saudi Arabia uh, production is not that good. I wonder whether maybe notice the price was down here at like 11 and change and they desperately needed to get that market up into this Friday above that $12 and all of a sudden mysteriously all these little uh, radio controlled uh, airplanes started hitting Saudi Arabia oil production just out of nowhere and everybody's like I didn't do it I didn't do it I didn't do it I didn't do it <laughs> no no there isn't a big conspiracy going on here in the in this world is there <laughs> And the irony of it all is that once that expires out of the way, then all of that derivatives implication. Keep in mind, before that Saudi Arabia event, a lot of those options were in the money and Wall Street was going to have to pony up some serious money, like to the tune of like tens, if not $50 million, some serious dough. And then all of a sudden, mysteriously, oh, that's all off the table now. I mean, is it worth maybe investing a couple million dollars to go and buy maybe 20 or 30 of these silly little drones? Park a couple of your secret agents in a strategic location just off the coast of uh, Saudi Arabia and manufacture this event to save yourself $50 million? You tell me. Money is money is money. Welcome to this nasty species called humans. Anyway, um... It's here and there. Um, I've been blabbing away for an hour or so. I'm glad I could help uh, Peter uh, answer uh, a question with regard to the uh, long-term uh, fear-greed cycles. Um, I don't know whether you YouTubers are uh, doing... Oh, hey, there's some YouTubers. Um, yep, yeah, so you guys are uh, chatting away there. Um, yeah. I don't know, you know, because the market's so quiet here, I guess the only thing I'll leave off on is I do like that uh, the altcoin market seems very, very washed out now. And if anything, it was probably good that we started seeing signs of life out of things like Ethereum. Um, and uh, if you do fancy yourself an altcoin trader, uh, pay close attention in here. Um as I sort of started the conversation out today, I um, I think that we went through sort of dead cat bouncy, and you know I like to put on these sort of trend following uh, models. Um, you know, bear, bear, still hanging in there, bear, 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 bear. You know, just off of that screen, let's go do another one. Uh, I think I got that up right here. Uh, I thought I had another one of these up. Yeah, this one. Uh, still bull. Well, that's good. Bear, bear, bear. Hanging in there. Bear, bear, bear. So other than Ethereum and Bitcoin, I'm getting a lot of bear sort of trending signals here. And what I'm noticing is, like, I would call these, remember I'd started off today with dead cat bounce, right? To me... This looks very dead cat bouncy. It's the start, hopefully, of us forming a bottom. Um, if you can hunt uh, those, you know, weekly inside bars, and I got to hand it to uh, Kevin, my uh, co-host, while the mayor of Vienna is off uh, getting his doctorate in film studies. Uh, the Duke of Albuquerque uh, hunted this inside bar, which actually created a really cool uh, daily uh, W, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, breakout, and uh, he just killed this. Um, congratulations, Kevin. Great trade. But uh, at the same time, too, I'm a little leery about saying that this is now officially a bull market. Uh, in altcoins. I think we're still a bit early here. I really do like the idea that we're finally going through sort of the final sort of washout. And, uh, you know, one good example I was looking at today, uh, and I'm constantly hunting, 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 looking for, you know, signs of reversals in the markets. Uh, I was tweeting out a couple ideas yesterday that caught my attention. This air swap 
I mean, I don't know what the fundamental story is, but what do you think? Does that look like it's down at the bottom end of its range? I'd say so. Uh, are you walking into a trap here buying a name like this right now? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> but, uh, you know, we look at the chart and you notice it made a new low here. Then it came up. Do we have the potential for a fractal? Well, yep, that uh, there is the fractal. Boom, boom, boom. Uh, the fractal signal actually fired off the weekly basis right there. Um, pretty darn big wicks up top. So sure is lots of uh, unfinished business up top there. Um, and we do things like 50% rules. I mean, I, again, I have no idea what the fundamental story is here. Um, do your own due diligence. I'm not making any uh, recommendations, not financial advice. This is just Brian talking out of his butt. 50% uh, levels, you know, 0 0.057. So we're sitting at 0 0.03. Notice, uh, you know, the bottom's down here around 0.5, or excuse me, 2.5. So, you know, can you get a, a realistic chance to double your money on a tag of 50%? I think so. Uh, we'll drill down to a daily and notice there is that weekly fractal level. Um, I actually like the idea uh, if you see a name like this just to uh, simply draw your reload zones going back down against the original bottom. And if you want to try and participate, see if you can sneak in on any sort of dip against this zone down in here. Um, and, you know, wicks and tails like to be eaten. I wouldn't be surprised if we get some sort of dips against these lows. Um, there's some really interesting looking ideas out there. I'm on a, I mean, on a relative risk reward basis, just even buying the, the W here, that weekly fractal, um, and just uh, trading it back to the 50% level. That's um, 2.66 uh, to 1 risk reward. You know, traders got to trade. Well, it's just sitting there. Um, so th there are lots of these little ideas perking out there. Uh, and of course, if you reload zone that, it's going to take it's going to be a higher anxiety trade, but your risk reward levels are going to be much, much higher. This little fun fair, no idea what that thing is, but interesting uh, weekly uh, W and, you know, today's Sunday, so who knows how this will finish. But if we go like a line chart, hopefully you can see the W is trying to come in and somebody came in and bought a whack of this thing here recently. So there are ideas out there, right? Um, I think I had, um, was it this one? Yeah. So this is one uh, you can hopefully see, you know, this is uh, the daily double bottom, down, up, down, breakout. So this is exactly like that, that one that I just showed you where, you know, you can either buy the breakout and if that's the case, you're long. Or you can take your crazy ass reload zone tool and work your stink bids and you notice that Mountain Man actually got a fill here. Uh, so if you're mountain manning this, uh, wicks and tails like to be eaten. You know, Brian, he loves his 78.6 candle body lows as trade location. So, you know, I mean, it's just sitting there. I don't know what the uh, fundamental story is here. Do your own due diligence. This is not financial advice. Brian's just talking out of his ass. Um, but, uh, you know, there are names and we're definitely near the bottom end of ranges here. You know, this is a kind of one where, um, you know, maybe you get in off of here and if it breaks through all of these kilos and this kilo, which happens to be about the same level, you just walk away. Uh, but the risk rewards are starting to look really, uh, really compelling here. A um, couple old names, but, uh, you know, a W is a W is a W. This is a weekly price chart. Good old Clammy. I don't know whether you guys uh, remember clam. I don't know whether it's, uh, I think Trex stole my clams. Um, and Trex loves to steal your coins from you. So just be cognizant of that. But hopefully you can see what happened the last time this thing W'd. Woo, what a rally. This is like 2019, right? So this isn't even in the bear. Well, lo and behold, look what's happening here. Down, up, down, breakout. Here comes another W. 
I, you know, I don't know what the fuck's going to happen, but I do know that 60 to 70% of the time when W's come in, they present pretty good trade ideas. Um, this happens to be on Poloniac, so I'm sure somebody on uh, YouTube's going to go, what is this, 2015, you fucking idiot? You're just an just a idiot. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, all I know is there's a W there staring at me in the face off the weekly price chart. It's just, it is what it is. <laughs> So, you know, caveat emptor, you know, uh, build your plans, trade your plans. Um, change that to a daily. You know, maybe you uh, you want to be a little more conservative. You got the weekly W, so now can I sneak in off of things like uh, trend line tags? I mean, that trend line's awfully uh, shallow, but it, hey, it's good to see that it's a higher uh, low. And something like that. So then if we go reload zones, there we go. So uh, maybe throw your stink bit in off of this original W and just risk to the bottom. No idea. Anyway, interesting market that we're in. I'm seeing a lot of this coming in here. Um, so there's, a, there's just a few ideas for you to kick around. Um, and as I had sort of said... Um, few minutes ago I really like the fact that basically they've completely washed all these markets out I think we're still kind of early in the uh, bottom finding process but you know this is ironically enough this is where a, a trader actually gets paid right uh, I used to work with the uh, prop guys and they used to always say a trader can make unlimited amounts of money I mean can be sky's the limit but at the same time, too, you have to understand that a trader is paid to worry. Mm -hmm. That is what their job is. I might argue, you know, you have to wait for the market to actually sort of set up opportunities. I think that we're in sort of one of these relatively asymmetrical risk kind of situations mm -hmm. like this clammy. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't know what's going to happen. You are paid to worry as a trader. But the relative risk reward, even if uh, I'm not even going to ask for new highs, I'm just going to say, give me a 50% bounce, right? The asymmetrical risk windows, I think, are starting to come in on, on these altcoins. Uh, you have location. We're getting structure. You want signs of indicator confirmation and then go. Uh, probably the absolute best thing that we could possibly find is show me some big buying interest. So that's why I like this little fun um, that I saw here. This, you know, we have an old expression in the market, volume speaks volumes. So um, this is what we want to see is we want to see the buyers actually coming back into the market. So. Okay, uh, I think I'm going to leave it at that for today. I hope you guys got some value out of this. Um, I had an interesting uh, conversation there about long-term fear greed cycles. Uh, I'm going to go get ready to give the boy an awesome afternoon. So uh, have yourselves a great day, everybody. Um, get well soon, Grim. Hope you're feeling better. Uh, level 1ers, uh, you got an extra week of uh, study here thanks to the Griminator. Um, uh, let's all play from a position of strength, um, and, um, and, uh, make sure that, uh, you're following your trading plan. All right. Have yourselves a great week. All the best and bye for now.